Let's go ahead and see if we can graph y equals 3 cotangent of pi x divided by 2. Alright, um, if you guys looked at the parent graph, which hopefully you've already done and already have written down, you notice that the cotangent and tangents do not have an amplitude, right? There's no restriction on how high they or how low they go. They go infinitely up and infinitely down as they approach asymptotes now. So, what we need to do is, um, we don't need to worry about finding our amplitude anymore. This three is still gonna have an impact on our graph and I'll show you how it's gonna have an impact. The next thing we need to understand is what our period is. And I'm just not gonna use. We are gonna have to understand what the period is. So unlike sine and, co sine and cosine, the period is now gonna be pi over b. And remember, the period is the distance that it's going to take your graph to complete one function. So b, in this case, is going to be pi over 2. So I take pi <coughs> over pi over 2. Multiply by the reciprocal, right? And what's going to happen is those f's cancel out, our pi's cancel out, and we're left with 2. Therefore, the distance that it's going to take for us to complete one cycle in, cotan in this cotangent graph is going to be 2. Now, one thing if you guys remember, when we were talking about our translations, our horizontal translations, um, of a regular graph, for sine and cosine, we had a, our period endpoints were from like 0 to pi. And I mean, maybe I'll just um, make this example. So if you guys looked at it, That was, this is what we call the parent graph. This is one period from the parent graph. Please put it there. This is one period from the parent graph. All right? Um, and what you notice is it kind of has an asymptote at 0 and at pi. All right? So what we want to do is now you can see, but this was, that was for y equals cotangent of x. All right? Obviously, we've made some changes, right? there's obviously going to be a difference. Now it's pi x divided by 2. So our graph is going, to look all, it's going to look different. So all we want to do is we want to find out what is our new period, which is 2. Then we want to find out what are our new asymptotes going to be. So right now, currently our asymptotes are at 0 and pi. So originally, these were your values of x. Your asymptotes were at x. We're you know, zero was your x value and pi was your x value. Well, how did our x values change? Now they're being multiplied by pi and divided by two. So all I want you to do is whatever take whatever's inside your function and put that equal to what your two asymptotes are. Okay, so you always take whatever's in your function and you set it equal to your two original asymptotes. So for cotangent, your asymptotes are at 0 and at pi. Now what we do is solve for x. So multiply by 2 on both sides. 0 equals pi x. Divide by pi. 0 equals x. Okay. Um, then for this one, I multiply by 2 on both sides. Uh, multiply by 2. And then I divide by pi. So I have 2 pi equals uh, pi over x. Divide by pi. And all I have now is 2 equals x. So now I don't have an asymptote at pi. Now I'm going to have an asymptote at 2. Well, you might say, well, how is that related? Remember, pi, guys, is a number. Pi is 3.14159, right? So 2 is going to be like a little bit short of that. So I'm just going to actually draw. I'm going to leave the paragraph up here. But I'm just going to draw a graph right below it. So they said we have an asymptote at 0. So you just make a nice little dotted line to represent your asymptote. Then your asymptote is also going to be at 2. 
okay? Now, one thing you need to understand is this intercept for your normal graph, for your parent graph, was at pi over two. So it's halfway between your two intercepts. So it splits it. So if this is at two, my new intercept is gonna be at one, okay? Now, the next thing, before we even start about graphing, um, the next thing we need to do is determine, well, where if I need to do another period, where's my next intercept gonna go? Well, ladies and gentlemen, let me write a little pink too. If here, from here to here is two, how long is our periods? Our periods are how long? Two. So my next asymptote is gonna be another two more over, which will give us four. So you can just say our next period is gonna be somewhere right there, which is gonna be at four. And then if this is at one, if I add two to one, add another period to it, what I'm gonna do is, you're not being any more descriptive, please put that away and then look up here. If I'm adding two to this, I'm gonna get this at three. Make sense? Okay. So now, let's go and see what is our graph gonna look like. Now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the, the best way to really do this is to find, find coordinate points and plug them in. So if I know that, you know, my coordinate graph is at 10 at pi, then what I could do is maybe plug in, and this is pi over two, maybe you could plug in like 10 of pi over three, which is right there, and maybe plug in 10 of two pi over three. So if you plug those in your calculator, you could figure out what are your x values, okay? And you guys can plug those in your calculator and see what the x values are for those. And that will tell you exactly where to plot your points to help you get the exact curve you want, okay? However, for right now, I just want to work on estimating. I'm not really concerned about you guys getting the exact values of graphs. I just want to make sure you guys understand what the graph is going to look like and how our transformations are going to help it. So if you guys can go back a little bit, you guys remember your x squared, right? Your parabola, correct? You guys remember what happened when I said, what was one third x squared? What happened to your parabola now? Does anybody remember what happened? Did it get wider or smaller? Smaller. Okay, did it get stretched or compressed? Compressed. Stretched, right? Wow. So it actually got wider. Okay. <laughs> Then, what happens when it was, what about when it was uh, 3x? So if I said 3x squared, it actually got compressed. It looked more like this. Right? Well, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? Without plugging in any points, you can determine that this is going to be, this is going to follow the exact same rules. So if this is what my parent graph looks like. Here, I'm going to have a 3 cotangent. That means I'm going to compress it. So it's just going to be a lot shorter of a curve. So it's still going to approach my asymptotes, but you can maybe say it's going to approach them at a much smaller curve. Okay? Yes? Um, for the asymptotes, you didn't like okay. use some equation to figure it out. You just looked at the graph and Where's the cotangent graph and found that pi was just an asymptote, right? I knew from your parent graphs, as I told you guys, I didn't just make it. The, parent, the asymptotes for a cotangent are at 0 and pi. So that is what your parent graph are. So to find your new asymptotes, you have to set them equal to whatever your function is. So that's what I did, yes? Could you use any of the horizontal or vertical um, asymptotes? Like, could you use negative pi? Yeah. You can use any. Can yeah, use it's just going to tell you. Yeah, I mean, it depends on where you want to. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I'm just using the asymptotes 0 and pi because those are algebraically probably the two easiest to use. But yeah, if you want to graph it in the negative and just say what's going to happen, where would my graph be if it was at negative pi and 0 or at negative 2 pi and negative pi, then yeah, it still works out. All right, so you guys see how my graph would look like this? It's just going to be skinnier. If you want to verify the fact, Pick points. Do tangent of one half, and do tangent of um, what we're doing be two. So you know, pick tangent of three fourths or something, and just see how that's going to change your graph. All right. But for right now, I just want to make sure you guys understand that if you're going to have a number that's greater than one in front of your function, 
just make your graph right now, sketching it, skinnier. And if it's less than one, you're just going to, if it was less than one, then it would look something more like this. And it'd be a much wider kind of graph. It still approaches your asymptote, but it still crosses at the same point. But kind of like the slopiness of how it crosses or how it reflects over is going to be different. Does that make sense? Okay. So your number in front does not change your amplitude. There is no amplitude yet. What it's going to do is going to now determine kind of if it's stretched or compressed at all. Okay. That's all it determines. All right. And like I said, guys, I'll I mean, just for time purposes, I'm not going to go through graphing the different points. All right. But if you guys can just understand that it's going to be a wider, then you can simply graph it. Yes? Even if it's like a sine and cosine graph? No, the sine and cosine is different. The sine and cosine, that's going to be telling you what your amplitude is. Right. It still does, yeah, you're stretching, you're compressing, but it does it in a different way. Anybody, any other general questions?